Welcome to Swinger University, where learning is fun and sexy. Bringing you an educational podcast about swinging. Here are your hosts, Ed and Phoebe. Hi, this is Ed. Oh, and this is Phoebe. Today we're talking about those couples you want to avoid having (laughs) sex with for the first time or ever again. We reveal some red flags that may pop up while getting to know them or even after you've had sex with them. As always, please remember to like and review us on Apple iTunes. And you could help us out too if you subscribe to us on YouTube. We're going to talk about the couple as a unit since they both reflect one another as potential play partners. Either one can contribute to this. Both of them could be acting together, behaviors, etc. Or against, yes, or against one another. Right, as, as the flag may fly. <laughs> Typically, the red flags all revolve around boundaries or rules that are broken or disrespected between them and or with you and your partner. Those awkward situations where things go down and you know they had a rule about it and yet something something is going on. <laughs> exactly. You're like, I didn't remember that part being okay. Boundaries and rules during communication. Sometimes the communication can be just downright disrespectful between those two people, you know, the, the, the couple that you are interested in. Right. And it can be uncomfortable. Maybe it's just their style and you're not comfortable with it. It's awkward enough to make you uneasy. We had a couple at one of the events where the husband was, it felt like he was in junior high. He was pushing her all the time. He was pulling on her top, trying to flash her tits all the time. She was uncomfortable about it. And she kept swatting his hand away. (laughs) It, It was very weird. Yeah. And we just, it just clicked for us. This is just awkward. There's something wrong with this dynamic. Yeah. And to me, it looked like he was being disrespectful to her wishes. And she didn't look comfortable. So I thought, well, if that's how they interact, then it's not going to go well with me at all. Right. Because it's often a sign of how he's going to interact with women in general not necessarily just his wife right if you can't follow direction with the one that you love and respect and honor then why would you with me i'm just a stranger right so there you go rando (laughs) i'm not rando no not for me but for you know (laughs) anybody at any event yes that's true rule perhaps gets broken with one partner or the other maybe they have a no kissing rule and all of a sudden she's kissing someone or he's kissing someone and that creates a type of discord between the two of them and a discussion ensues and maybe you know right. that ends that type of interaction or they 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 don't find out and until a little bit later and you think the kissing's okay or they had a conversation that kissing was okay because here's where it gets complicated in the profile it said no kissing but then you know shit changes right three sure. months down the road you've been playing you're like yeah you know what kissing's no big deal they yeah, didn't update the profile role. they didn't update you all of a sudden the wife is kissing you but the husband's not okay with it and then what I thought you guys were all on the same page. No, 
Oh, dun, so. dun, dun. You stepped in it, and And now I didn't it's a mess. even know it. Yep. Although a guy would never be annoyed if I was kissing his wife, but poor example. <laughs> I, you never know. May, maybe. You never maybe. know. I haven't, I haven't encountered that. A no-buy rule or something. I don't know. Maybe. I don't think it exists. Mm, I can't imagine. <laughs> All right, people pretending who they are not on dating apps, and Ed can speak to this scenario. Yeah, this was a really weird story. We may have touched on this one before, but Possibly, it's worth bringing but up it's again. Yeah, because it was so bizarre. It was so bizarre. And and we've had other ones that were equally bizarre, so. Maybe I'll genericize it a little bit, kind of amalgamate several stories together because cause they're similar in theme. Got it. You start texting somebody. Mm -hmm. It's either through Kick or through SLS. Some messaging is going on between two couples. Mm -hmm. And as the conversation progresses... It starts to smell funny. And I know what, like there's no. 30 feet? Yeah, like <laughs> smell a vision. They don't have that for texting, which is really good because I think the poop emoji would be pretty bad. <laughs> there's, there's just something off about the conversation. And at first, you don't see it, but as each sentence goes, comes through you mm -hmm. start to connect things mm -hmm. so this particular example guy was posing as a couple mm -hmm. started sending pictures then slowly kind of awkwardly he didn't realize he was revealing this but started saying things like my friends the couple and then you're like, wait, what? I thought you were the couple. Oh, no, I'm the single guy. Uh-huh. But this is like, I don't know, days deep in a conversation. Right. And... it Plenty of conversation had happened where there this was an... should have been made obvious <laughs> up front. Like... And it's coming out later because <laughs> the guy tripped up. Yep. So... This goes back, I mean, we've talked about this a bunch of times in terms of lying. Mm -hmm. Lies are hard to maintain. Mm -hmm. You got to keep all of your facts straight, mm -hmm. your, your misfacts. And it's just way easier to stick to the truth because you know what that is. You know <laughs> what the facts are. It's easy to follow. <laughs> but if you start making up fish stories, which part of the story is made up which is real how do i keep it straight anyway guy was not very good at keeping his lies straight we yeah. were on to him and basically cut the conversation off because at that point we're like uh no we're not just going to show up at your house because you're clearly lying yeah so yeah yeah so that's for communication those are types of examples and things that you know, scenarios that might throw up some red flags right. something's just off with anything regarding communication next we have drug use where maybe you have a rule that you don't want to play with anyone who does drugs or particular drug or whatever your your rule is right um, for whatever reason and so that's a that's something that's broken with you you had you know it was disclosed up front hey we're, we're non-smokers whatever and they come to your house and they start smoking in your house or they ask to smoke on the back patio they wouldn't do that in your house but bust out the crack pipe whatever <laughs> right and you're like um i have an allergy to cigarettes so you know what the evening is off and now you got to kick them out of your house that's that would be really awkward. Yeah. A huge red flag. Yeah. So there's that. Then, you know, or, or it's at the bar or something like that. You, you, or you smell it on them, whatever. It's a red flag. You'll, obviously you'll figure that out. 
Yeah. But then the other rule is maybe, or that's broken, is between the two partners where one gets a little too drunk or they decide to pop E or something and the other one doesn't know it. And then there's some discord between the two of them because right. they're they're clearly not on the same page right and actually the smoking one's an interesting one too because it's we've had couples that didn't disclose things like that mm -hmm. in their profiles and then you go to meet them and you're like wait a second mm -hmm. your profile said non-smoker is an example right and they hide it because they're hiding it right they don't want you to know or they you know they're embarrassed by it or whatever right and it becomes this weird point of contention because if you're hiding that what else are you hiding right sets off a red flag right i do want to say too though that i mean i mean if you're you know, not, the couple's like 95 percent a go with you both and you're both are clicking you know, maybe that's one thing you you want to go, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. We played with a couple where he was a smoker and you really couldn't tell. His hygiene was so great. Right. And I mean, he smoked and then immediately after he wash and brush, you know, rinse and gargle and whatever. And it was almost not noticeable. He'd, he'd clean up. And so for, for me, it wasn't a huge deal right um I, i'd prefer not but you know it, it's up to you it's up to you so do you know yeah i mean these are your rules absolutely I mean, you can figure out what they are and whether whether you can it's a deal break or break not them. yeah yeah right it again it's an example of how dishonesty you know can pop up right condoms you have a rule and it's broken <laughs> we've had this, this one's where, pretty bad <laughs> we've had this where you know they it's clear it's out there they know it and then all of a sudden they show up and they're like oh left them at home okay well we have extras and you will be wearing one or you will be leaving right and you know i get that no glove do, no love i get that people forget and may leave them at home but this this particular instance was it was it was not it's a choice to omit yes yes yeah or and, go ahead and i was just gonna say this this one is if a couple has chosen to play with condoms to not play bareback They've made this choice probably for their health, probably for Peace prevention of, of sexually transmitted diseases, longevity, the they longevity, have children. right? I mean, <laughs> they've made they've come to this decision for a reason. many reasons. Yeah. So disrespecting that, especially with somebody's health at stake, sure, is pretty serious. Yeah. So this isn't one to play around with. Right. Um, it It's, yeah, it's right. pretty legit. And I, I understand it, it, it can happen in the heat of the moment. You know, maybe you're a little too drunk or whatever. And you can't find a condom and you're like, ah, fuck it, you know. Right. And you fuck without it. Well, that may be fine and a risk that you want to take, but just know that that you shouldn't really be playing with other people that evening unless you disclose that. Well, I guess you could wear a condom, I suppose. Sure. With other people, that would be safe. But you wouldn't be able to... I don't know. If that... For example, if your condom accidentally came off inside of somebody and you didn't know it and you're stroking around and you're like, holy shit, my condom came off. Well, then, you know, obviously everyone would have a discussion and then we'd go get tested right away. 
Right. And then we'd have to wait three months and we'd get tested again after not having sex with anybody else. And then, so it'd be basically six months without having sex with anybody else just to make sure we were drug, or not drug free, but STDI free. Yeah. And it's kind of disruptive to the whole uh, groove thing. Yeah, it is. It's annoying. All right. Another example, anal versus not. Right. It's off the table. All of a sudden, someone tries to do something without asking. hey yo. Oh. And it wasn't just a slip. They that were like, happened. yeah, consciously trying to take advantage. So that would be a red flag. And that's pretty obvious. Right. Privacy. Sharing names with others, sharing photos with others. Maybe you like taking photos during a session and you've agreed that those are private between you and that other couple and all of a sudden they shared those photos with somebody else and you right. found out about it or you saw them somewhere. They're up on their profile all of a sudden. Yeah. Stuff. Without your permission, yeah. 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 Not a good thing. Especially if you're trying to maintain your anonymity. Oh, God, yes. Surprise. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Go my pile. Safe status. So this one's an interesting one. And we we have a bit of a personal story with this. Two. Where, two? Yes. Two. Um where there was a couple that we were playing with and pretty good friends with them. And after a while, they disclosed to us that they hadn't disclosed to us mm -hmm. that they had a sexually transmitted infection. And it was disturbing on a couple levels for us mostly because of the dishonesty and that they chose not to disclose that in play anyway. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to disclose it and, you know, throw it out there. It's like, look, all the cards are on the table. We'll let you guys make your decision. We respect your decision, et cetera, et cetera. But by not telling us, we weren't given the choice. That's that was really awkward. It was it was it was awkward and it was really disheartening. I was really sad because we really like these individuals. We still like these individuals. And so right. we had to take a break for a long period of time and I had to really think about all that and um later decided that the friendship was actually worth salvaging right because they're just such good people yeah so yeah I, I didn't want to throw that away because of that transgression now it did change the dynamic it did I mean, we decided at that point that playing with them was not worth the risk right uh, but the friendship was perfectly salvageable absolutely so absolutely. and you know, this all comes back to getting tested, you know, frequently just just to make sure because people sometimes don't disclose everything. And that's why it's important. At least we feel it's important to play with condoms and to follow as many safe sex guidelines as you can. And frequent testing is one of those things. Mm -hmm. And you know while you're interviewing couples they may they may just straight lie to you so like that example you know they they did but they came out later and told us but the other couple never told us and we found out through somebody else right <laughs> and so this other couple we interviewed said oh they they hardly ever play super selective super selective and they've been monogamous with each other for years right like forever so not the case that that was like five red flags by the way all in a single sentence yeah because 
not only were they not selective, the husband had been cheating, cheating for years. For years. And we we knew we found out later that they had um, HPV. Yeah. So it it was just boom, one after, boom, the, boom, other, boom, after boom. the other after the other after the other. So we took a little break after that because we're like, oh my god, how are we supposed to interview and select these individuals? How are we supposed to 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 figure out this? Where's our lie detector? Right. right? Well, the long and short of it is you almost should carry your test status on like a little piece of paper like a passport and be able to flash your badge i know we've never gone to that extent and in all honesty that's our bad right. um, we've trusted people that they were being honest with us and I mean, you're going to be sharing your body with them. You kind of hope that there's a little bit of implied trust there. Right. But. Yeah. To be. This, it's trust, but verify. Right. Right. The lifestyle is risky. And, you know, you, we, we went into this long ago reading all the side effects of the, of the STIs and what happens if you get one. Right. And assessing that risk. If I do get one what can i do about it and how quickly can i take care of it what that is that what does that mean for me obviously the biggest risk is is aids and you can combat that with a condom so we went into this like i said long ago knowing that yeah there is a percentage of risks when you're having sex with somebody else whether you're a swinger or whether you're a single person right I mean, sex with other people, you're basically sharing their previous partners. Right. Exactly. It's it's like peeing in the pool. Yeah. It's but in there. Typically, you know, I mean, you, again, assessing your risk factor, you know, if you're, you know, sleeping with another couple that goes to, you know, desire once a year you know maybe their their risk is pretty low because they sleep with one or two couples once a year right right versus someone who's out every weekend risk level is going to be higher it's all risk all food for thought all risk, for thought. Analysis. risk analysis <laughs> so sexy i know we're so sorry we're so sorry and then you're gonna have your own reason yeah and we're throwing this one in because we mentioned some examples, but anything that makes you feel uncomfortable or gives you this kind of pit of your stomach, mm -hmm. intuitive, sixth sense, your spider senses are tingling, something's off, that's, that's your subconscious. That's that little voice telling you that there's something wrong yeah and in the heat of the moment you're in the club <laughs> sexy things are going on you're probably not sure what it is because you're going thinking with my head thinking with my dick thinking with my head thinking with my <laughs> but there's something off and you're not sure what it is you, right. you might figure it out in the next day or two, right. um, maybe when the, the the sex is worn off. <laughs> but eventually you'll figure it out and you're like, you know what it was? It was that comment that they made or that thing that they did. Mm -hmm. And I know why it set me off. Right. So maybe they just become that partner that is a one-time play partner but not a multiple play partner right right and we have had those situations plenty of times plenty of times where yeah. uh we're all into the couple and then they do something like being rude to the waitress at the oh. restaurant and you just like way rude like everyone like yes like I'm mouthing the words I'm sorry silently to the our waitress that was there serving us 
first. And that was yeah. one of those things where we're like, okay, this is weird behavior. Not sure what to make of it. No, we're not wait staff, <laughs> but there's something off about this. Yeah. And it came out later and we figured out what it was because that kind of weird behavior started exhibiting itself in other ways yes. later in the evening. Yes. So pay attention to your partner when they say, I got a weird feeling about this or tell your partner, I've got a weird feeling about this <laughs> Yeah. because you're, you're probably on to something and you, you just haven't figured out what it is. Right. So pay attention to your feelings. They, your feelings are valid. <laughs> all right everyone we understand it's it's hard like i said when you find that right couple and you you like them and you're ready to you know sleep with them but there's that one red flag that pops up and keeps you both from moving forward it's it can be very very disappointing but you know in the long run it can save you a lot of headaches before you turn off our podcast to take care of all the vanilla things pulling you away, please reach out and give us a review. I know, mashing a star is so much easier, but a review is so much better for sharing your love of what we're doing with others. We would appreciate it. If you want to share a personal story, ask us questions, or share your comments, you can contact us at Swinger University at gmail.com. Check us out at swingeruniversity.com where you can find links to our Twitter and Instagram feeds. Thank you for listening to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment podcast. attention to those inner voices and then we'll talk to you guys later i don't know what that was <laughs> i'm gonna cut that out we could use it as an outtake <laughs> just just ignore me oh my gosh you're so funny <laughs>